section 10 deals with the contents of the specification. What should a specification contain? Section 10 1 says that there has to be a description and a title. In rule 13, the extent of the title is mentioned and what form it should be and what should be the limitations of a title are mentioned in rule 13. 10 2 states that drawings may be supplied or if the controller insists they shall be supplied. So, it is optional supplying a drawing is an optional thing, but if the controller requires then it has to be done. Drawings are treated as a part of a specification and wherever there are references to the drawing you will find that the written part of the specification will have cross references to the drawing and drawings shall be used since they form a part of the specification they will be regarded in construing the specification. So, we understand the specification as a written statement of the invention, but the written statement can also be supplemented by drawings. 10.3 talks about models and samples. A drawing is deemed to be a part of the specification, which means if you search for a copy of the specification, you will find the drawings in it. Whereas, models and samples by their very nature, they cannot be textualized. So, understand that the drawing and the written part of the specification because they can be textualized, they form a part of the specification. Whereas, models and samples, it is hard to textualize them. So, they are not deemed to be a part of the specification. 10.4 describes the various parts of a complete specification and parts and functions of a complete specification. 4a tells us that the complete specification shall fully and particularly describe the invention and its operation and use and the method by which it is to be performed. b the complete specification has to disclose the best method of performing the invention which is known to the applicant and for which he is entitled to claim protection. c the complete specification should end with a claim or claims defining the scope of the invention for which protection is claimed. d mentions that the complete specification shall be accompanied by an abstract to provide technical information on the invention. Now, what should be there in the abstract is detailed in rule 13. The controller has the power to amend the abstract if the information provided in the abstract is not clear or if the controller feels that by amending the abstract the better information will be communicated to third parties. In the complete specification where an applicant mentions a biological material and if the biological material is not described in a satisfactory manner and if such material is not available to the public, then the applicant shall deposit the material to an international depository authority under the Budapest Treaty. So, once the biological material is deposited, there is a date on which that is done and a number which is given. So, those details have to be included in the specification and access to the material is available in the depository institution only after the date of the application for patent in India or if the priority date is claimed after the date of priority. And the applicant also has to disclose the source and geographical origin of the biological material in the specification uh, when used in an invention. 4A tells us that in the case of an international application designating India, which includes a convention application and a PCT title, description, drawings if there are any, abstract and claims filed with the application shall be taken as a complete specification for the purposes of this act. Subsection 5 of 10 states that the claim or claims of a complete specification shall relate to a single invention. In section 7 that there is a cross reference to section 7 which tells us that an application can be only for a single invention or a group of inventions that are connected by what is called a single inventive concept. There are a group of inventions, but they together have the same concept. Phi also has another requirement that the complete specification shall be clear and succinct 
and shall be fairly based on the matter disclosed in the specification. Subsection 6 says that the declaration as to inventorship of the invention shall in such cases as may be prescribed be furnished in a prescribed form with the complete specification or within such period as may be prescribed after the filing of the specification. Subsection 7 states that subject to the foregoing provisions of this section a complete specification filed after the provisional specification may include claims in respect of developments or additions to the invention which was described in the provisional specification being development or additions in respect of which the applicant would be entitled under the provisions of section 6 to make a separate application for a patent.